Good morning, everyone. Uh, nice to see you all here at Cantech. And my name is Dan Blondell. I'm the CEO of Nano One Materials. Nano One Materials is a technology company. We are developing processing technology to improve the cathode materials. That's the stuff that actually holds lithium ions as you charge and discharge them inside a lithium ion battery. So we're working on the guts of the lithium ion battery. The cathode is about a quarter of the cost of a, uh, of a, of a lithium ion battery. And there's a whole bunch of other components like foils and, and, uh, and other materials in the battery. But the cathode is really the majority of the cost. And the, uh, the raw materials that comprise those cathode materials are, are, are where a lot of that costs come from. So we're trying to address uh, cost through a reduction in cost in raw materials, process and scale, and the raw materials usually consist of lithium, nickel, manganese, cobalt, aluminum, iron, phosphate. There actually are many different types of lithium ion batteries. So the, 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 there's always lithium in it, but the, the other components vary depending on whether it's, a, it's an application like you might have in your cell phone or a drill or a, or a car or for, for the energy storage market. We take those raw materials, we blend and combine them uh, to improve the performance, capacity, charge, cycling of the, of the material. We use a chemical process uh, that is finished off with, a, with thermal processing in a furnace and that is essentially where our wheelhouse is. We take those raw materials and we convert them into a composite material that can then be used inside a lithium ion battery. We have 10 patents so far uh, granted in jurisdictions that include the US, Canada, Japan, Taiwan, and Korea, and uh, we expect to see uh, more patents coming out in China and Europe as well. Give you a sense of what the market looks like today. Uh, on the back of the expansion of electric vehicles and electric storage, uh, the projections are that there'll be about 4 million electric vehicles in 2025. That will result in about $23 billion in cathode materials worldwide, and that will be consists of a, a series of uh, different types of cathode materials. So those acronyms you see up there, LFP, stands for lithium iron phosphate that will be typically used in electric buses, industrial applications, uh, energy storage materials. LMO, that's what was in a uh, Nissan Leaf. Uh, NCA, that's what's in a Tesla. That's nickel, cobalt, and aluminum with lithium. And then NMC is, is lithium, nickel, manganese, and cobalt. That's what you're going to see in most uh, long-range electric vehicles. And of course, lithium cobalt oxide. That's what dominates the consumer electronic business. All of these are areas uh, that are uh, materials that we can make with our process. We are relatively agnostic as to which one succeeds in the marketplace. We bring value to all of them. Um, the, uh, I want to speak a little bit about lithium-ion batteries and how they're made and where those trends are going because it's important to the uh, choices that we've made as to which materials to focus on. A conventional lithium-ion battery, if you, if you take a cross-section through it, consists of a piece of aluminum foil with some powder laminated onto it. It's a very thin film of material. That, that powder that's laminated on it consists of the lithium, nickel, manganese, and cobalt, or lithium, iron, and phosphate. Um, it is laminated with a piece of copper foil with a graphite laminate onto it. It's sandwiched together with a, uh, with a separator between them and all soaked in a liquid electrolyte that's actually got lithium concentrated into it. That's actually a flammable liquid. So when your battery goes south and there's a big problem, that's the stuff that catches fire. It's actually not the cathode material or the other parts. Um, it's essentially that hydrocarbon material that's in there. Um, but the, the safety mechanisms that are built into batteries prevent that that from happening in, in uh, you know, 99.99% of the, the cases, but that is the, uh, that is the safety risk inside a battery. That is how lithium ion batteries are made today. Next gen batteries will be using uh, more dense cathode materials. They'll be using higher voltage electrolytes, and we will see the addition of things like silicon, nickel, and niobium into the, uh, into the anode materials to improve the performance and the energy density. And then lastly, we, you'll, you'll hear a lot about solid state batteries uh, going forward into the market space. These are five, 10 years out. Um, still have cathode materials, very much like we, we use in conventional lithium mine batteries today. However, the electrolyte is now a solid material made of a, sort of a polymer or a glass or a ceramic material infused into the cathode 
and an ultra-thin lithium uh, anode it replaces the graphite, and what you get is a battery that is much thinner, much safer, and much denser. Um, this, uh, uh, we can address all of these different markets, and we are actually looking at the, the, uh, the current uh, opportunities and, of course, the next-gen opportunities and the long-range opportunities in the solid-state batteries. To give you a sense what this looks like going into the future, uh, the majority of lithium-ion batteries going into electric vehicles today consists of, these, uh, of the, the generation of batteries that I talked about uh, just in the last slide. Uh, we won't see any of these advanced materials really taking off into the uh, electric vehicle or the consumer electronic market till the mid-2020s, and solid state really doesn't pick up until the, um, until the 2030s in, in a really viable way. Uh, again, we're working on every one of these materials to try, try and address these, so there are near, mid, and long-term opportunities in Nano One's makeup. Um, give you a sense of how the supply chain looks. We take these raw materials, we blend them in a reactor, we dry them, cook them in a furnace, and what you get out is a, is a black powder. That black powder would then go to a, uh, to a battery maker like Panasonic and be, uh, be integrated into a battery cell. We have a flexible platform, as I described, we have a low-cost process, and we are able to enhance the performance of the material. Um, it's, it's usable in conventional lithium-ion batteries and next-gen solid-state batteries. It has applications for uh, the consumer electronics market, the electric vehicle market, and, of course, the uh, energy storage market for renewable energy. We have two pa partners that we just announced, one in December, one in January. I'll speak to them a little bit later. And, and of course, there are a number of different players in the supply chain of whom we're talking to all of these players, and we hope to be able to uh, further our relationships into similar agreements that we have with, uh, with Poulid and St. Cobain. We built a demonstration pilot plant, which you see here in Burnaby, uh, which is a, uh, uh, a suburb of the sort of Vancouver area in Western Canada. And uh, the reactor you see here in the middle is where the magic happens. That's where we mix things together, form the initial crystal structures. They then get fired in a furnace, which you see here on the other side of the screen. And that's where the final cathode material comes out. Um, the pilot is used to simulate and de-risk production of, of, uh, of these materials, and this is what we, uh, that's what we present to the large cathode manufacturers and industrial companies. It allows us to produce materials for further piloting, and we are actively working with, uh, with over a, a dozen and a half tier one automotive and, and chemical suppliers into the automotive and energy storage market. And again, uh, we just recently announced uh, partners with Poulid and St. Cobain. More detail on that in the next few slides. The pilot allows us to uh, build engineering models uh, and, and scale up the, uh, the, the facilities, describe the capex and opex uh, of a full-scale facility, and that's really what we have on the table with a bunch of these players. Uh, we're trying to bring this to uh, um, uh, bring, bring out a, 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 a license deal with these, these people so that we can uh, monetize our technology in the form of a royalty agreement. A uh, little bit on Poulid, uh, we just signed a joint development agreement with them last, uh, uh, last week and uh, they are a very large cathode producer in China. They, make, they have about 15% market share in, in a variety of different cathode materials including lithium iron phosphate. Uh, it, lithium iron phosphate is the safest longest lasting and uh, lowest cost cathode material on the market today. It isn't high energy density, so it serves more of the industrial market and not so much long range electric vehicles. The agreement is to co-develop our technology for scaled production of lithium iron phosphate. They have, uh, they have 20 plus customers, including uh, BYD, BAIC, and a whole bunch of other uh, sort of major players. ATL, uh, ATL make the batteries that are in your iPhones. Uh, so they're, uh, they're certainly a global player, and they are the only cathode producer in China right now who license their technology from uh, key international players. So they have uh, very global ambitions to expand their marketplace, and they're coming to us for manufacturing technology. So it's a, it's a really big deal for, uh, for Nano One, and uh, we believe is a catalyst to, to much uh, more to come in the, in the, in the, in the next year. Maybe a very brief description on our model. We have a licensing model, uh, and this is a description of how we look at it from a lithium iron phosphate point of view. Lithium iron phosphate batteries consist of lithium iron phosphate and a, and a carbon coating. You can see that traditional cost right now here for the raw materials, that's lithium and all those raw materials, is about three quarters of the cost of the battery itself, of the, of the, of the cathode material, I should say, and the rest is, uh, is, is, uh, is operational costs. 
Uh, right now, uh, it's made hydrothermally. That's basically in a pressure cooker uh, in outside of China. It's a very expensive process. It makes a very good material. Within China, they make a, they make an equally good material uh, for less cost using a uh, um, uh, using what we call a solid state method, and we have a way of making it that eliminates waste streams and produces a um, material that actually reduces the cost of iron and phosphate feedstocks, thereby opening up the margins and providing a 10 to 40 percent saving, depending on where you uh, make it in the world, and increasing those margins. And our license, roy our royalty would be based on the uh, how we extend those margins and the, and the benefit we bring to the company uh, in the sales cycle. Uh, very la for, for the last slide here, I want to talk about St. Gobain. We signed an agreement with these guys in December. They are a very large materials company. They've been around for 400, 400 years. Uh, they're based out of France. They supply uh, 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 basically materials into many, many different markets. And they got their start in mirrors and glass uh, in, in Europe, uh, again, 400 years ago. And they have expertise in high temperature uh, manufacturing of materials. So we will be working together on the furnace component component uh, of our material to improve the firing of these materials. So it's a, it's a very exciting relationship. We'll be doing testing with them in France, US, and uh, in Canada as well. Um, just to close out, the, uh, we've, uh, we, we took the company public in 2015. We've raised approximately uh, $18 million, five of which uh, was non-dilutive monies and government grants, and we expect more in the coming years. The Canadian government's very happy with the results they've had from us. Uh, we uh, have 65 million shares outstanding, uh, and we have cash and uh, in, the, in the till right now with about a year to a year and a half's worth of runway. And uh, very, I'll, I'll close it out there. I'm, certainly, I'm open for questions uh, as uh, for the rest of the day, so come find me. Thank you very much. Really appreciate your attention.